Hello and welcome to another autumnal video. This week I thought we could flesh out some kind of uh, autumnal TBR between us. So I thought I'd go through my autumnal TBR, the books that I'm planning to read in the next two months, October and November. And I'd really love it if you could also put your suggestions and your TBRs in the comments below. And between us, we can build a sort of resource of nice, spooky or cosy books that between us we can use as a resource for this spooky season and maybe find some new reads for ourselves that we haven't seen before. When I talk about my autumn TBR, it's a pool of books basically that I can choose from. I'm quite a mood reader. So I like to have a pool of books and then I can choose which ones I want to read as I go. I usually read a book a week. I can get through a book a week. So these are the books that I've got for October and November. Um, there's one a week and then a couple just thrown in in case I do happen to read a little bit faster. So I do really like a good spooky book, preferably something dark and gothic, but I like to alternate them with something a little bit more cosy, a little bit more just sort of witchy or autumnal or comforting. So I've got two sort of sets of books, some that are a little bit more on the cosy side and some that are a little bit more on the dark side. The first two that I'm going to talk about are ones that I'm actually reading now. I'm in the middle of. The first one is Bookshops and Bone Dust. I read Legends and Lattes last year and I really, really enjoyed it. So I was dying to get my hands on Bookshops and Bone Dust. And this is actually this month on Kindle for 99 pence. So I snapped it up when I saw it. So I'm just going to read you a little synopsis. I'm about halfway through it, really enjoying it so far. It's very, um, just, it's a gentle read. It's just, it is what it says it is. It's a cosy, gentle read. There are a few more high stakes, I think, than there were in um, the original Legends and Lattes. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. So I'll just read you the synopsis so that you can see what it's about, if you haven't heard about it already, which I'm sure you have. First Loves, Second Hand Books and Epic Adventures. Biff's career with the renowned mercenary company Rackham's Ravens isn't going as planned. Wounded during the hunt for a powerful necromancer, she's packed off against her will to recuperate in the sleepy beach town of Merck. So far from the action that she worries she'll never be able to return to it. What's, what's a thwarted soldier of fortune to do? Spending her hours at a struggling bookshop in the company of its foul-mouthed proprietor is the last thing that Viv would have predicted, even though it may be exactly what she needs. A suspicious traveller in grey, a gnome with a chip on her shoulder, a summer fling and an improbable number of skeletons prove Merck to be more eventful than Viv could have ever expected. Sometimes right things happen at the wrong times. Sometimes what we need isn't what we seek. And sometimes we find ourselves in the stories we experience together. Yeah, it, so far I'm I'm really, really enjoying this one. So I definitely would recommend giving it a read. And as, as I say, it's just a cosy, gentle read. The next one I'm actually listening to on audiobook. I pre-ordered it because I've been dying to get my hands on it for so long. And it's Rewitched by Lucy Jane Wood. I follow Lucy on YouTube. If you don't, highly recommend it. She's a lovely, um, re really down to earth and just my kind of person. And she's written her debut novel, Rewitched. And as I say, I've been trying to get my hands on it for ages. It was released this month on the 19th of September. So as soon as it came through, I grabbed it on audio book and started listening to it. Again, I'm about halfway through it. Really, really enjoying it. It's, it's a really, really lovely read. So I'll just read you syn the synopsis of this one. Um, it's, a, it's a witchy read. It's a witchy book. But again, it's more of a cosy type of witchy book. It's time to rediscover her magic. With found family, a dash of romance and an uplifting message about self-love, Rewitched is a cosy autumnal fantasy that will leave readers spellbound. Belladonna Blackthorn hasn't lost her magic spark, but she hasn't seen it in a while either. Balancing work at her beloved London bookshop Luna Books with handling her toxic boss and concealing her witchcraft from those around her, Bella is burnt out. Perfecting the potential of her magic is the last thing on her mind. But when her 30th birthday brings a summons from her coven and a trial that tests her worthiness as a witch, Bella risks losing her magic forever. With the month of October to fix things and signs that dark forces may be working against her, Belle will need all the help she can get from the women in her life, from an unlikely mentor figure and even from an infuriating coven watchman who's sworn to protect her. And at the bottom, Sarah Beth Durst from the Spell Shop says, 
I was completely charmed by this delightful and endearing novel about rediscovering your spark. And yeah, it is so far a really, really lovely, cosy read. And it is what it says. It's all about rediscovering yourself and rediscovering your spark, but with a, a lovely, cosy, witchy feel, vibe. Definitely recommend picking this one up. The next one I've had on my shelf for quite a while now, a few years actually, and just lately people seem to have been picking it up on the YouTube channels. I've seen a few people talking about it and it reminded me that I got it. And it's this one, City of Ghosts by V. E. Schwab. Um, this is a middle grade book. Um, but yeah, I've been meaning to read it for ages, but you know, you've got, you have so many books and you just look past them. So yeah, it's reminded me to pick this one up. So I've got it out. It's going in my TBR basket so that I don't forget that it's there. And I'm going to read that this one this year. So again, the synopsis. They're here. They're watching. Cass can pull back the veil that separates the living from the dead. And when Cass's parents start hosting a TV show about the world's most haunted places, the family heads off to Edinburgh. Here, graveyards, castles and secret passageways teem with relentless phantoms. But when Cass meets a girl who shares her gift, she realises how much she still has to learn about the veil and herself. And she'll have to learn fast. The city of ghosts is more dangerous than she ever imagined. That sounds right up my street. It sounds really creepy. And Edinburgh and go graveyards and spooks. Uh, yeah, sounds great. And it's, it's not very big. It's not a very big book. And it is a middle grade book. So the lines are pretty far apart. So hopefully that won't take me long to read at all. Uh, and yeah, looking forward to that one. The next book's on my Kindle and it's this one, The House Witch. Um, I do actually have this one and the next two that I've been picking up as they've been coming up on the 99 pence deal on Kindle. I'm looking forward to reading this one. And if I like it, then I shall follow on with the other two. So the synopsis for this one, again, it's a nice cosy one. There's a new cook in the castle and he's got a magic touch, a warming blend of cosy fantasy and romance in this tale of a wayward house witch and his magical adventures in and out of the royal kitchen. When Finley Asherwan joins the kitchen of the king and the queen of Daxaria, he's an enigma, which suits Finn just fine. He's satisfied simply serving as the royal cook, keeping nosy passers-by out of his kitchen and concocting some truly scrumptious meals. But Finn has a secret, one that may not stay hidden for long. As his past begins to catch up with him, Finn must negotiate court politics and stay out of trouble, together with his familiar Kraken, his fluffy black kitten. Mm, who doesn't love a fluffy black kitten? But things become even more complicated when he catches the eye of a certain lady who just so happens to be part of the royal court. Can Finn successfully hide his secret and protect his heart? Or will the chaos of the castle and its good-hearted people get the best of him? Filled with fascinating characters, courtly intrigue, political machinations, try saying that three times, delicious cuisines, cuddly companions, magical hijinks, and will they, won't they romance, the house witch and the enchanting hearth is the first in a captivating new series. Wholesome, heartwarmingly homely, the house witch series is a cup of cocoa in a book and will be perfect for fans of Legends and Lattes and TJ Clune, which I am fans of both Legends and Lattes and TJ Clune. So that should be a really nice cosy read to break up the spooky horrible ones. So the next more on the cosy side books is this one, My Roommate's a Vampire. I meant to read this one last year, completely forgot about it. It was on my Kindle, completely forgot it was there. So this sounds like it's going to be quite a sort of a funny book. So this one says two strangers, one apartment. Will it be love at first bite? Cassie Greenberg needs a new place to live and fast. When she finds an affordable apartment in a beautiful neighbourhood, she knows there must be a catch. Of course, a new roommate, Frederick J. Fitzwilliam, is far from normal. He sleeps all day, is out all night on business and talks like he walked out of a Regency romance novel. He also leaves Cassie heart-melting notes around the apartment, always asks her about her day and doesn't look half bad shirtless on the rare occasions they're both home and awake. There's no denying that there's a spark between them, but there's also a secret. With true love at stake, will Frederick come clean? It sounds really funny, and I'm really looking forward to actually getting my teeth stuck into this one. <laughs> I know, I'll get my coat. 
next is the Once and Future Witches. Now, I bought this one a few years ago now with some birthday money that I'd got, um, like a new book, and it's sat on my shelf ever since, and I haven't read it. As with many of us, I'm sure we've got TBRs that are way longer than our, probably our lifespans. Um, so yeah, this year I am definitely going to read this. I've been going through my old books and picking out ones that I really wanted to read at the time and meant to read. Time ran away with me and I just didn't. So this year I'm picking up some of those books. So the synopsis for this one is, In 1893, there's no such thing as witches. There used to be in the wild dark days before burnings began, but now witching is nothing but tidy charms and nursery rhymes. If the modern woman wants any measure of power, she must find it in the ballot box. But when the Eastwood sisters, James Juniper, Agnes Amaranth and, Be and Beatrice Belladonna join the suffragists in the New Salem, they begin to pursue the forgotten worlds and ways that might turn the women's movement into the witches' movement. Stalked by shadows and sickness, hunted by forces that will not suffer a witch to vote, and perhaps not even to live, the sisters will need to delve into the oldest magics, draw new alliances, and heal the bond between them if they want to survive. There's no such thing as witches, but there will be. So yeah, this one sounds like one that's all about feminism, women, women coming together, and sticking up for each other. I don't know that that's what it's about, but that's what it sounds like. So, yeah, I'm going to read this one. This one is quite a hefty one. So um, between that one and this one, that probably counts as two regular size books. So, yeah, I should, I should be OK. I should get through it. The last of my more cosy side books is this one, The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And again, I have been meaning to read this for such a long time and haven't got around to it. So this year is the year that it's happening. I'm definitely going to read this. I hear really good things about this. So the synopsis for this one. The circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there when yesterday it was not. And that's actually all the synopsis says. There are some quotes from people that read it and, and have sort of commented on it. So it says, the night circus made me happy. Playful and intensely imaginative, Erin Morgenstern has created the circus I've always longed for. This is a marvellous book, and that's by the author of The Time Traveller's Wife. Uh, the time says, a breathtaking feat of imagination, a flight of fancy that pulls you in and wraps you up in its spell. So yeah, that sounds, that, I really want to read this. I don't know why I've just not picked it up and done it. So this one is definitely going to be read this year. You need to hold me to that. So now we're moving on to the more spooky books that I'll be reading in between these uh, more cosy books. And the first one is Bella Donna. This one, Bella Donna by Adeline Grace. And again, it's on my Kindle. So the synopsis for this one, and apparently it's book one of three. So if I like this one, then um, I'll, I'll get the other ones as well to follow on. I'm pretty sure, again, this is one that I meant to read last year, as with a few of these books. Um, but again, this year is going to be the year it happens. For as long as Signa Farrow has been alive, the people in her life have fallen like stars. Orphaned as a baby, 19-year-old Signa has been raised by a string of guardians, each more interested in her wealth than her well-being, and each has met an untimely end. Her remaining relatives are the elusive Hawthorns, an eccentric family living in Thorn Grove, an estate both glittering and gloomy. Its patriarch mourns his late wife through wild parties, while his son grapples for control of the family's waning reputation and his daughter suffers from a mysterious illness. But when their mother's restless spirit appears, claiming she was poisoned, Signa realises that the family she depends on could be in grave danger and enlists the help of a surly stable boy to hunt down the killer. Signa's best chance of uncovering the murder, though, is an alliance with death himself, a fascinating, dangerous shadow who has never been far from her side. Though he's made her life a living hell, Death shows Signa that their growing connection may be more powerful and more irresistible than she ever dared to imagine. The New York Times bestseller Adeline Grace, Belladonna brings to life a highly romantic, gothic-infused world of wealth, desire and betrayal. So yeah, that's the first more spooky one that I'm going to be reading this year. And the next one is this one, House of Hollow. And again, I'm sure I meant to read this one last year. 
But this one was shortlisted for the YA Book Prize in 2022. So it is a YA book. I don't know whether you can see as I'm looking down, but I am reading from my Kindle. I didn't think to actually show it or to look whether it's in shot. And you're probably wondering what I'm looking down at. So anyway, the Hollow Sisters, Vivi, Grey and Iris, are as seductively glamorous as they are mysterious. They have black eyes and hair as white as milk. The Hollow Sisters don't have friends. They don't need them. They move through the corridors like sharks. The other little fish parting around them, whispering behind their backs. And everyone knows who the Hollow Sisters are, because one day the three Hollow Sisters simply disappeared. And when they came back one month later with no memory of where they'd been, it was as if nothing had changed. Almost nothing, despite, or maybe because of, the terrible passion to be with them that they can exert on anybody at will thrilling twisting novel that's as seductive and glamorous as the hollow sisters themselves again i've heard really good things about this book so definitely going to be reading that one this year the next one that's been on my list a while as many of these have is mexican gothic no it's got gothic in the title so it's definitely going to be my thing again this one's on my kindle and the synopsis the acclaimed author of Gods of Jade and Shadow returned with mesmerising feminist reimagining of gothic fantasy in which a young socialite discovers the haunting secrets of a beautiful old mansion in 1950s Mexico. He's trying to poison me. You must come for me. Naomi, you have to save me. When glamorous socialite Noemi Taboda, I think that's how you say it, receives a, a frantic letter from her newly wed cousin begging to be rescued from a mysterious doom, it's clear something is desperately amiss. Catalina has always had a flair for the dramatic, but her claims that her husband is poisoning her and her visions of restless ghosts seem remarkable even for her. Noemi's chic gown and perfect lipstick are more suited to cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing, but she immediately heads to High Place, a remote mansion in the Mexican countryside determined to discover what is so affecting her cousin. Tough and smart, she possesses an, in, an indomitable will and she is not afraid. Not of her cousin's new husband, who is both menacing and alluring. Not of his father, the ancient patriarch, who seems to be fascinated by Noemi. And not by the house itself, which begins to invade Noemi's dreams and visions of blood and doom. Her only ally in this inhospitable abode is the family's youngest son. Shy and gentle, he seems to want to help, but might also be hiding the dark knowledge of his family's past. For there are many secrets behind the walls of High Place. The family's once colossal wealth and fading mining empire keep them from prying eyes, but Noemi digs deeper. She unearths the stories of violence and madness. And Noemi, mesmerised by the terrifying yet seductive world of High Place, may soon find it impossible to leave this enigmatic house. Now, the thing that really fascinates me about this one and makes me want to read it is that anything gothic that I've ever read has always been British, mostly. Dark, dismal, you know, haunted house type houses. You know, miserable weather, rainy, dank that kind of thing this one's met in mexico mexico to me is is hot desert i just can't envisage a gothic -y type novel in mexico so i'm really intrigued to find out what that's like and to read it so looking forward to reading this one because i think it's something different to what i would normally read the next one i want to read is this one dead voices this is a middle grade book but it's on my spooky list purely because I read Small Spaces last year, which is the book that goes before this one, and it was creepy. It was really creepy, which great, a creepy middle grade. I, think, I don't think you can beat a creepy middle grade. Even sort of the adult horror books and stuff don't come close to a good creepy middle grade. So that one last year, absolutely loved it, really, really enjoyed it. So this year I've got the next one, Dead Voices, and I'm really, really looking forward to getting stuck into reading this one. So let me read you the synopsis for this one. New York Times bestselling author Catherine Arden returns with another creepy spine-tingling adventure in the critically acclaimed Small Spaces Quartet. So again, it's a quartet, so looking forward to getting the other ones as well because these books are fantastic. Well, the first one was anyway. Having survived sinister scarecrows and the malevolent smiling man in Small Spaces, newly minted best friends Ollie, Coco and Brian 
are ready to spend a relaxing winter break skiing together with their parents at Mount Hemlock Resort. But when a snowstorm sets in, causing the power to flicker out and the cold to creep closer and closer, the three are forced to settle for hot, co for hot chocolate and board games by the fire. Ollie, Coco and Brian are determined to make the best of being snowed in, but odd things keep happening. Coco is convinced that she's seen a ghost, and Ollie is having nightmares about frostbitten girls pleading for help. Then Mr Voland, a mysterious ghost hunter, arrives in the midst of the storm to investigate the hauntings at Hemlock, Hemlock Lodge. Ollie, Coco and Brian want to trust him, but Ollie's watch, which once saved them from the smiling man, has a new cautionary message. Beware. With Mr Voland's help, Ollie, Coco and Brian reach out to the dead voices at Mount Hemlock. Maybe the ghosts need their help, or maybe not all ghosts can or should be trusted. Dead Voices is a terrifying follow-up to small spaces with thrills and chills galore and the captive foreboding of a classic ghost story. Awesome. Can't wait to start this one. I think, actually, after I finish uh, Bookshops and Bone Dust and uh, Rewitch, which I'm listening to on audio, I think that this is going to be the next one because I literally can't wait to get stuck into it. I, I just love a middle-grade spooky thriller. They're just perfect for this time of year. If you've been around here a while, you'll know that I'm a sucker for a haunted house and a gothic tale. So the next one that I want to read is this one, Starling House. Again, I've heard really good things about this book from others on YouTube and in, in the booktube space. So I am looking forward to reading this one this year. So the synopsis is... Step into Starling House if you dare. Alex E. Harrow... Yeah, I'm just looking at my pile of books. So this one is also by Alex E. Harrow. Um, so that'll be two Alex E. Harrow books this year. So we'll soon find out if this is a new favourite author for me. Sorry, I'll start again. So step into Starling House if you dare. Alex E. Harrow reimagines Beauty and the Beast in this, oh, I did not know that, in this gorgeously modern gothic fantasy. Perfect for fans of B.E. Schwab, I am, and Naomi Novik. No one in Eden remembers when Starling House was built. Everyone agrees that it's best to let the house and its last lonely air go to rot. Starling House is uncanny and ugly and full of secrets, just like it's air. Opal knows better than to mess with the haunted house or brooding men, but it might be a chance to get her brother out of Eden. It feels dangerously like something she's never had, a home. But Opal isn't the only one interested in the house, all the horrors and wonders that lie beneath it. If Opal wants a home, she'll have to fight for it. She'll have to dig up her family's ugly history and let herself dream of a better future. She'll have to go down, down into Wonderland and claw her way back to the light. This is a romantic and spellbinding gothic fairy tale from Hugo, Nebula and Locus Award shortlisted Alex E. Harrow. Uh, someone else is there. Ava Reed, the author of A Study in Drowning, has said uh, Starling House is Alex E. Harrow's greatest work yet. So, yeah, looking forward to this one. This time of year for reading is the perfect time of year for me. These are the books that I enjoy the most. So I'm trying to make the most and fit as many in to this season and make most of these dark, chilly nights to be reading these gothic tales. So the last one is this one, Bellman and Black by Diane Setterfield. Now, I read the 13th tale by Diane Setterfield and really, really enjoyed it. So when I saw that there was um, a sort of an autumnal spooky book by Diane Setterfield, I, I wanted to pick it up straight away. So I've got this one again on my Kindle and I'll read you the synopsis for it. And it's a, Vict a haunting Victorian ghost story. So that's right up my street straight away. A haunting Victorian ghost story of love, loss and the mystery of death from the best-selling author of The Thirteenth Tale and Once Upon a River, which I have actually also got on my shelf and haven't read yet. So Wendy Holden of the Daily Mail has said, This is a ghost story and while it's dark, atmospheric and full of death, what I loved was its life and colour. Setterfield is brilliant at character and setting and can make even a woollen mill. Fascinating and utterly riveting. A rags to riches tale with a spooky twist. As a boy, William Bellman commits one small cruel act that appears to have unforeseen and terrible consequences. The killing of a rook with his catapult is soon forgotten amidst the riot of boyhood games. And by the time he's grown with a wife and children of his own, he seems indeed to be a man blessed by fortune. 
until tragedy strikes and the stranger in black comes and William Bellman starts to wonder if all his happiness is about to be eclipsed. Desperate to save the one precious thing he has left, he enters into a bargain, a rather strange bargain and an even stranger partner to found a decidedly macabre business. Bellman and Black is born. That kind of tells you a little bit, but not an awful lot. So I'm looking forward to finding out more about that. It sounds intriguing. So that was the last of my books for this October and November. As I said before, I'd be really, really interested if you've got any recommendations for me. They're a longer, spooky, gothic, terrifying, but not horror. <laughs> Does that make sense? Then please give me your suggestions down below. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. As always, I really appreciate you being here and I shall see you again next time. Bye bye for now.